Okay, we're at the 34th lesson of the second epistle of John, and we pick up what we talked to you last time about the judgment seat of Christ. We were talking about the ability to lose rewards, not your salvation. We're going to pick up where the rewards are going to be sought or given. What are the rewards? So based upon what we uh, did last time, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward for going to the judgment seat of Christ now. This judgment is about Christians only. There will be no lost people at this judgment. You are at this judgment based upon the belief in the blood and the gospel that Christ died for our sins, was buried according to the scriptures, and arose again according to scriptures. And we take to Romans 14.10. Why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why do, dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand, talking to brothers, not unsaved. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. From the calling of Peter, Andrew, James, and John, to the last Christian that gets saved before the rapture, all will be at the judgment seat of Christ. It is written to save men and women. A rare chance will somebody who is lost pick up the Bible and start reading. And if their heart is into uh, of the Bible and not to accuse the Bible, then they will be saved. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. All Christians will be judged. Listen, being saved doesn't get rid of being judged. I'm saved and you know, I don't have to be held accountable. You're wrong. Totally wrong. We will stand before our Savior one day. And may I bring a very important verse up. Before we stand before Jesus. And this verse will be your guilty or your innocence before Jesus Christ. 1 John 1 9. If, conditional cause, we confess our sins, He, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and conjunction to cleanse us from all unrighteousness the sins that we confess under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ God will forgive and God will cleanse by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that is the only way to clear or to clean your slate of sin. The blood of Jesus Christ. The confession of your sins. And seeking God to cleanse you. And to fight the battle you are having with them sins. It's a battle. Your flesh wants and your spirit doesn't. Your spirit wants and the flesh doesn't. You don't need to worry about swords or, or guns or anything like that. We, we don't fight a physical battle. Our warfare is spiritual. And I won't get into where Paul writes in Romans, well, I, that I want to do, I don't, and that I don't want to do, that I do. But that's what it's all about. Any sin, Christian, under the blood 
by your confession, not your mother's, not your mo your husband, not your father, not the priest, not the pastor, your confession. Any sins under the blood will not be judged. They are forgotten. They are erased. According to 1 John 1 9. Now don't go to God and say, Lord, forgive me for smoking. And you're, you're doing it right then and there. That don't work. It comes from a heart attitude. That you are sorry. You are repentant. Acknowledge that you are a sinner. Saved by grace. Those sins not under the blood will be judged. You got to understand, we're going to take this slow. I don't know how far we'll advance this out. But let's take it slow. Let's take the judgment seat of Christ before we move to the next verse. You need to be aware, Christian. Judgment is coming. Yes, even for us that are saved. Yes, I... Since April 1987, I have been saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was there with Brother Joe Caswell with an open King James Bible in my grandmother's house in her living room, 773 Broad Street Extension. But I cannot say, since April 1987, I am not a sinner. Let's look at 1 John 1 9. Let's turn there. So just read it because because then 1 John 1 10 speaks about something that we need to adhere to. 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, God. And his word is not in us. So I can't say since April 1987, I have not sinned. I, I'd be a liar. Because I have sinned. I have sinned knowingly. And I have sinned unknowingly. It says in Proverbs 28 verse 13. He that covers his sin shall not prosper. Oh, well, you know, my mother made me do it. Or I was nervous at the time. Or no one saw me do it. Or I'm just prone to do it. When you make excuses for your sins, there is no prosperity. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them to sin shall have mercy. See, we can't just throw the blood there, Lord, wash this, and I'm going to do it again. See, before we get to the judgment seat of Christ, we've got to look at what is our attitude here alive and being well. Because I can safely assume that no Christian watching this, this video is dead. A Christian that has died is not going to uh, hear and learn anything from this video, but you are alive and you need to learn something. You have been saved. You are still a sinner. You sin. You've got to do something. You've got to have an attitude about your sin. And 1 John 1, 9 and Proverbs 28, 13 says confession and forsaking. You can't go into it. I lost the word I was thinking about. You, you, you can't go in with denial. And you can't go in there, oh, I'm going to keep doing it. I mean, if you were to take a knife and keep banging against your arm, eventually, within time, your arm is going to fall off. 
Oh, Lord, forgive me for stabbing my arm. Lord, forgive me for stabbing my arm. Lord, forgive me for stabbing my arm. Lord, please glue my arm back on. No. And that goes with, with, with smoking. That goes with drinking. That goes with sex. That goes with coveting. That goes with, with, with your mouth. That goes with what you hear or what you see. All your senses. And I don't want to quote the word, but you've got to say no to sin. And if we say that we have not sinned, and there are religions out there, oh, we don't sin. We make him a liar. You're saved. You are a sinner. And there are sins that you do accidentally. You know, you may be driving down the street and a guy cuts you off and up goes the finger or up goes that out of your mouth. Lord, I'm, <coughs> I'm sorry. You open up a pack of 20 cigarettes and, oh, Lord, forgive me for, for I'm going to smoke these 20 cigarettes. What's the difference? Lord, forgive me for, for drinking beer and, and you're walking it down the little conveyor belt to the cash register. It's not going to work like that. So, we've got confession of sins. While we're living, we've got sins that we enjoy. We've got sins that we got to battle and fight the flesh. You know, every soldier that goes out in the battlefield, he didn't ask for the bullet to be put into him, and when he gets the bullet, he runs to the aid station and gets treated for the bullet that has violated his body. And he gets treated, and he goes back out in the field and fights. But there's also a point that you can take your weapon and shoot yourself. And go to the aid station and get treated and shoot yourself again while they're treating the while they're treating the wound that you just made. And they treat the next wound you shoot yourself. Eventually they're gonna say, hey buddy, what you know what's the sense? You keep shooting yourself. We've got soldiers on the war field here that are involuntarily wounds. And the question comes to when we go to another particular spot in the Bible, and this is all through the Holy Spirit because this is not in the notes. Look at Romans 6.23 that we use for witnessing. And there's nothing wrong with using this verse to witness to the Lord. But Romans 6 is written to Christians. Romans 6, 23 says, the wages of sin is death. Do you know, Christian, why you will die if the Lord tarries? Because you sin. I'm going to die one day outside the fact if the Lord comes. But if he tarries in my lifetime, you're going to put me underground or I'll be scattered with ashes, nuclear bomb, or whatever it is. I've got a death certificate locked up in my lockbox. And on it, it says, for a Christian, it was some words with cancer. But that's not, that's not the real prone that should be written upon a death certificate. A death certificate should have mounted and ground in that paper sin as a cause of death. Why did this typhoon come in and destroy this entire island and people and children die? Why did this volcano go off and women in the streets were killed? Why did this house 
our houses, this neighborhood, this city get destroyed by a tornado? Why did my little child die? Why did God allow it? Hey! God did it! Your sins allow that to happen. Had not Adam disobeyed God with taking that fruit, had Eve had not disobeyed God by taking that fruit, if they had taken the tree of life, there would be no tornadoes, there would be no tsunamis, there would be no cancer, there would be no death. It is man in his rebellious state against God Hey, take the blame off God and put the blame on you. Why did my child die? You, you put enough forensics and enough DNA and enough blood work and all that, I guarantee it can probably go back to something that you, the parent, had done in your lifetime. If not, the wages of sin is death. Christian. We are sinners. And after we die, but the gift of God's eternal life. You're going to have eternal life after you die, Christian. And you have the hope, the eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, based upon the love of God, John 3.16. You, as a born-again Christian, cannot lose your salvation. Yes, even if you go out, thou shalt not murder. If you murder somebody, you're a born-again Christian. You can't lose your salvation. Now, murder is, is a sin. It's wrong. And we're going to see you will lose something, but not your soul. A true, dedicated Christian who's serving the Lord and reading the Bible and attending a, a proper church under proper preaching is not even going to think about murder. But did you know as far as sins, when you think, you're just as guilty as doing? Jezebel signed the death decree for Naboth and had him stoned. And yet, you go check the scriptures, and God said, go to Ahab, who killed Naboth. See, Ahab was responsible for his wife. And Ahab was charged with the murder just as much as his wife doing it. And Jezebel didn't do it. She ordered it. The city killed Naboth. But the charges went to Jezebel for doing the, the written proclamation. And the charge went also to Ahab her husband, who is supposed to be in charge of her. Joab and his brother were charged with a murder, with a murder of a fellow sur soldier, not in wartime. Yet Joab, I forget the guy's name, but Joab did the murder. But the Bible records that his brother was also charged. Why? Because Joab and his brother were mad at this guy for killing their other brother. Now, Joab's brother did not do the murder, but he was charged. Why? Because he was thinking about it. And you need to realize not only being a verb as far as fingers, Matthew, is it Matthew 5? Let me show you something here. This is the words of Jesus, if I, if I got it right. All right, Matthew 5, 28. Go there. you got to realize, as we're going to the judgment seat of Christ, and we're going to more scripture than, than what I have written in the book, so the Lord wants me to, to get this out simple.
smoke a cigarette. Sin. Okay. I might have coffee. What about thinking about having a cigarette? Is that a sin? Would you say if a man goes and kills another man, would, would he be guilty? Of, I mean, he's got the gun, he's got the knife, whatever he is. There's a dead body. Would you commit him to be a murderer? Would you commit yourself for thinking about killing your boss, your spouse, your children, your neighbor? Would you commit yourself to be a murderer? One has a smoking gun or a bloody knife. The other one's just thinking about it. One has a cigarette in his mouth and he's inhaling and puffing it out. The other one's got the open pack and I'm going to smoke it. He's done something wrong. Someone found out. Thinking of a lie, are you guilty of a lie? Whereas you just came out, uh, did you do this? No, 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 I didn't do it. No, no, no. Who would be guilty of the lie? Him that told the lie or him that was thinking about lying? Let's get now with Matthew 5, 28. If my wife were to come home and find me in bed with another woman, in the act, you know, they caught her in the act in, in the Gospel of John, the very act, would I be in charge with adultery? You would say yes. I mean, Caught you. Yeah, but what if I'm somewhere and a, and a woman in, in a bikini walks by and I look, wow, look at that. Is that adultery? Now, see, I've given you several illustrations. Of actually doing something or just thinking about it. This is what Jesus has to say. You ready? Are you ready to face the judgment seat of Christ, Christian? Because you don't even know what's going to happen. Some of you know. And I'm refreshing your mind and bringing it back. Some of you are going to look at this with your mouth dropped and say, Oh my God, and fall to your knees and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I didn't. No! Lord, thank you for that message. And then some of you are going to say, He's a fool. He doesn't know what he's talking about. You hear that pack of lies that, that, that preacher said? And go on and keep doing what you're doing. See, you're either going to obey God and fall to your knees. You're just going to continue the way you're going. Or you're already in the hope, in the blessings, in the mercy of God. It's like, it's a refresher. I wish he'd move on to another subject. But it says in Matthew 5, 28. But I say unto you, this is Jesus. If you got a red letter Bible, I don't. This is going to be red lettered. This is the mouth of Jesus. The Word of God. And I mean the Word of God. The whole Bible is Word of God. This is Jesus speaking, and He's God. That whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, 
I look at a woman, I see, woohoo, baby, look at, wow, woohoo. For some of you, it's pornographic material, videos, or print. You know that magazine? You know that video? Or the book? He's not in bed with her. He's not in a hotel with her. He's not in a couch. He's not in the back seat of a car. He is nowhere in contact with this woman. There is no flesh joining flesh. Let's get that. Looketh on a woman. He's looking at her through a video, through a magazine. He's sitting on the street. He's looking at a billboard. He's on the beach. It's a swimsuit issue. All right. Now, I can look. I can go walking down the beach with bikinis and bathing suits. And I can look. I can look. That woman needs to cover up a little more. Woo -hoo, boy, I'll tell you. Wow, that woman's. Wow, woo. I mean, I'm, my wife and I walk down the beach and we see somebody like, oh boy. Get them a full length mirror. That was ugly. <laughs> I've looked at my wife and I see, like, why are they two different? You know, that one, that, the top don't match the bottom there. You know, I'm looking. Is that a sin? Look what Jesus says. Looketh on a woman to lust after her. All right, now I'm not just walking down the beach with, with, with the bathing suit. Now, I'm, who? Hmm, if I had that. Oh, look at that woman there. She's built. Oh. I'm not a glutton. Gluttony is a sin in the Bible. Oh, if I had that piece of pumpkin pie there with some whipped cream. Oh. See, what's the difference in saying, oh, look, she made pumpkin pie. Looks good. Oh, if I really had that pumpkin pie, maybe a couple slices. Let's finish the verse. I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. All right, so let's rewind the thing here. Let's take the judgment seat of Christ as this. <clears throat> I'll give you the scenarios again, and you tell me. You're walking down the beach, and you're just looking and just walking down the beach. Is that a sin? No, it's not. Driving down the road, and there's a big, big billboard clad with, a, with, with, with flesh. You just look on it, pass by. Is that sin? No. You're walking down the beach, and there's there's women, naked bodies all over the place. And, ooh, wow, like that, like that, like that. That's adultery. You know, when you got your computer. And you're watching things you ought not be watching, and you're thinking, Ooh, look at that. Wow, I wish I was. Man. That's adultery. When you got them magazines, whether they're naked or half clothed or whatever they are, what you're thinking is a sin. Okay? Let's go back to the other illustration that we've already talked about before the judgment seat of Christ. You got a guy there, he, there's a dead body, he's got the smoking gun, he's got the bloody knife, whatever it is. 
murderer. We beyond doubt, he's a murderer. In your heart and in your mind, you thinking about killing somebody. You're bought. Oh, I wish I could. If I could only. And maybe sometimes you even dream dreams of killing that person. According to the adulterous statement that Jesus made about looking upon a woman to lust after in his heart, being adultery, in your heart dreaming about or thinking about killing somebody, the charge is murder. Like Joab and his brother. Like Ahab for the responsibility of his wife and for Jezebel for, for signing orders to have Naboth killed. How many times since you've been saved? Your sins were all washed when you were saved. We don't need to go before your salvation date. Those are all under the blood. But since you have been saved, <coughs> have you innocently thinking, Oh, I want to kill you? I wish I could kill you? You ever had dreams, ever had thoughts of killing somebody? That's a sin. Have you ever got your heart aroused by watching a TV program, that woman there or that guy, if you're a woman? Today, I don't even want to get into that. But have your heart or any other emotions in your body? Who? Jesus said that's adultery, and you don't even have to be with them. Remember I said, if my wife came home and found me with another woman in the act, it's John chapter, uh, I think it's 8, I would be physically guilty of adultery beyond a shadow of a doubt. And yet, I'm going to nail it down. And I'm going to be gross. It's for you to understand. Listen, talking to adults here. If I'm walking down the beach with my wife and I'm looking at a body and I got an erection, that's a sin. Of adultery. I don't have to be smoking. Oh, I wish I had a cigarette. That's a sin. I didn't tell my boss a lie, but thinking about a lie is a sin. Oh, honey, I, I, that looks like a beautiful pumpkin pie. Oh, I wish I had a couple slices of that pie, you know, my big diet that I've got. Oh, I really wouldn't want that. That's a sin. It's gluttony. See, we got to get into the fact before we jump into the judgment seat of Christ. Not because I've been in a bed, a couch, a back seat of a car, or whatever with a woman. Not because if the Lord comes, he'll find me with a cigarette hanging out of my mouth. Not because I am not holding a smoking gun or a bloody knife. Oh, I held off. I don't cuss in front of people around me at work. I don't. What are you thinking about? What is being said under your breath that people can't hear? Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. Now when we step off into eternity, whether the Lord comes or whether we die, we need to realize about the judgment seat of Christ. We will be judged not only for things that we actually done physically, but what we've done in our mind and our heart. See, Jesus said, and already in his heart. Friend, are you going to stand before Jesus Christ, our Savior, at the judgment seat of Christ for Christians only and be accused of being a murderer? And you're going to say, Lord, wait a minute, what? 
I never killed anybody. Reroll the film. Oh, if I only. Ugh. I want to kill you. And then you find out your actions of your heart speak louder than the actions of what you've done. See, some of you are listening to this audio. I'm, I'm raising my hands up and you in video can see it. Just because these fingers and these hands did not commit the sin, if my heart has, I'm guilty. Because my mouth did not say or promote into actually biting into a sin or kissing or licking or whatever. If my heart has, I'm a sinner. My eyes don't have to see the sin, but if my heart sees it. And some of you need to realize that some of your dreams that you're dreaming, daydream or nightmares, may have to be put under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ or will show up at the judgment seat of Christ. Now, didn't we just hit a Wally Whoopa? And you watching this video or have turned off the video, you are without excuse now. Because the words of Jesus Christ, if he says, listen, you don't have to sleep with a woman to be charged with an adultery. Because then John tells you that they caught a woman in the very act. Jesus here in Matthew says, you just got to think about it. Have you read all the places in the, in the scripture in the New Testament? Or is it out of the heart cometh and then it murders, uh, fornication, adulteries, lasciviousness, and murders, and envy, and out of the heart? You got to realize not just your eyes, your smelling, which is your nose, your tasting, which is your mouth, your hearing, which is your ear, or your touch, which is your body. Not only is your five senses going to be judged, but the sixth sense of your heart and your mind will be judged too. We all Christians, and some of you who have never ever heard this, and, and God is talking to your heart. I hope after this video or even right now as I'm, I'm speaking to you that much repentance and, and, and prayer is going to God now and God has to open up all the, the lines because all the saints listening to this are saying, are repenting. And the blood of Jesus Christ upon this video is flowing, washing away, smiling upon the face of God that these sins are no more going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. I hope. And yet for some of you, Satan's going to walk away with a big smile on his face because you ain't going to do nothing for repentance. You're going to come up with an excuse and you're going to blame me to be a hypocrite and stupid and everything under the sun and twisting and wrestling the scriptures so you can continue to do what you want to do. And what I'm telling you is by the scriptures, I don't have to throw out four-letter words right now. If I'm thinking about them right now, that's just as guilty. You may not know, but God knows. Proverbs 15.3. I don't have to have it in my mouth to be sin sinning. I can be just thinking about it. I don't have to be physically with another person. I have to be thinking about it. And I'm going to tell you where another danger lies. And I know this personally. I'm trying to help you guys to confess your sins and realize what's around you. My job that God's given me for the, for the minister of the word is to, 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 to think of things God has given me to think about that you don't. That I can bring it to you what God has put in my head to put into your heart to say, oh. And we are in a sin, cursed, devil-denominating world 
that when you go grocery shopping, that music that's been in your head before you're saved is being played in your head again. I work in a grocery store. And I have found my times that that thing being played over the loudspeaker, sometimes I'm singing. Or I'm thinking about that tune. Now, I have made put away all that radio. I put away all the cassette tapes. I put away all the records, all the 8-tracks. Got, got rid of them when I was saved. All right? If I'm walking through the grocery store pushing that cart, and I'm hearing that music and I'm thinking about it, it's all gone. I don't have it in my house. I don't have it in my car. But it's in my ears, in my heart. And you can't escape the grocery store. They all have it. That's the trouble. See, you can try to live a good, clean life. Then Satan comes in and throws something into you. And let me ask you a question. Have you giggled over, oh, I'm listening to this song and, and singing it, or I've been thinking about something that happened way back when, when I, when I first heard this song, or I read, and then, have you confessed it and put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? You realize when you go in a store today as a born-again Christian, that when you get out in your car, before you start that car, you have to bow your head and say, Lord, the things I saw, the things I've heard, the things I looked at, the things I touched, that... I need the blood. And a lot of many cases you didn't even know where your heart went wild. Where your five senses went crazy. But Satan does. And Satan knows where to go and say, hey, you see him humming that song? You know, David saw Bathsheba washing herself. I, I saw that cover while I'm waiting at the, at the grocery store. And then you took a second look. That's exactly what David did. He took the second look, and that was a sin. Well, I, I just look at the national card. Yeah, just you know, it kills time. And, and you know, the checkout so long. Yeah, but that second look. You put that filth inside you. You get the wrong amount of change to your benefit. Well, if I just keep it, no one will know. Sin. Because had she shortchanged you, oh, you would definitely speak out. But at that moment, oh, if I keep it, you know, they charge me extra for the stuff anyway. It's no loss to anybody. That's the sin. You will be guilty of lying, not saying something, and then stealing. Well, I gave the money back. But what were you thinking? Did you confess what you were thinking? Are you trying to tell me something like that and you just, just right off the bat think, oh, I'm going to give it back. Okay, maybe you do. What are the other things that you think about off guard? See, this beginning, what we're talking about now is the beginning. We only got one paragraph of, of what we're doing here in the book. I have a feeling the Lord is going to guide me off. And it's not a bunny trail because we're sticking to where we are. <clears throat> because I think there are people listening to these videos going to get a hold of these videos. They need to realize right now. Don't think physical sin. I'm really struggling with smoking. I have such a problem. You believe that's under the blood? If you're fighting with it, yes. Thank you. Needed that. Oh, wait a minute, though. If I think of things doing wrong, and I have not confessed them, they will show up in the judgment seat of Christ. And you didn't even think to think about them. You needed somebody God's using like me. To bring to you on how guilty you are. See, we can't say if we say that we have not sinned. 
Well, I've done, I haven't touched, tasted, smell, and all the senses. Yeah, but what do you think about? And what you think about is sin. Thus, you have sinned. And then sins of thought need to be confessed. See, that's not what's being preached today in the churches. I think many Christians are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And thanks to the lazy, boring men in the pulpit who are surrendered to the world and to Satan, Many Christians are going to stand the judgment seat of Christ, and they're, they're going to stand guilty, and they're not going to have an idea why. Well, every church service I went to, every Sunday morning, you know, it, it's the it's the gospel message and how to be saved. Yeah, but pastors, why aren't you feeding the flock this? Why aren't you telling them what is going to happen at the judgment? Well, I won't be liked. And not what we like. Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Paul said. Brothers and sisters and Lord, you need to realize we, me included, may be sinning when we don't even realize we're sinning. And we need to ask God Where our sin life lies, even if we don't even know we're sinning. We may have been blind to that part of the Bible, or we may skin right through that part of the Bible. We may have been distracted by Satan, that part of the Bible. That we were really at that moment, we were to pray and God would soak our eyes on that passage, whoever it is, or whatever it is, to say, Hey! There is a sin in your life. Now sin is going to be battled in these areas. Number one, you're just going to flat outright reject what I've told you. Again, you're going to commit your sin and you don't care. Number two, you're going to confess the physical sin and not think about the heart sin. Well, if I don't do it, I'm not really sure about thinking about it. But, it, I mean, come on. I mean, walking by where there's a beer display, hmm, that, that, that's no, come on, no. Seeing that girly on the magazine walking by and then taking that, that, that that's no, that, that's that's too much. I, I'll confess the sins I do. Okay? Number three, you're just going to truly repent and be sorry and, and ask the Lord to help you be on guard more often. That's the best one. Or number four, you're just going to you're just going to play dumb before God and oh. Uh, I didn't hear anything he said. Oh. Look, look at him wearing that silly shirt. Oh. His beard's too long. His glasses are not clean. I didn't hear nothing. And I'm going to say this again. And I've said this often. I say it on the streets. I say it with some of my messages. It's just, it's just one of those things. It's, Thanks to me and the Holy Spirit of you listening to this, wherever I am, whatever I'm doing as far as the Word of God, you are without excuse. It's plain and simple. You will be judged for your sins. And you don't even have to physically commit those sins. This is going to be a great lesson because we did one paragraph. 49 minutes of one paragraph. This is how serious. And we're basing this again on, this, on 2 John that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Don't lose any of your reward because your heart went astray.
Read what Jeremiah has to say about the heart. It's, it's, it's wicked. And it's guilty before God. Pick up lesson number 35 next time.